What's up? This is Richard Steigner, aka Robot. I'm here in Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, I'm getting ready to go on tour tomorrow with the exchange as we open for the Backstreet Boys all over Europe. So excited. Uh, I wanted to um, start this off right by doing a video series on beatboxing styles, and this one in particular is about rock. This is going to be particularly helpful if you are in an a cappella group or if you're putting together a beatbox solo and you want to have a rock break, something like that. Um, we'd like to analyze this as if we're talking about percussion, not just beatboxing, because that's what we're doing, right? We're adding percussion to songs. We're creating noises, not just uh, showing off a novelty. So, first thing we got to look at is the tempo. Second thing is the instrumentation. And the third thing is the stylistic flares that kind of make it what it is. Now, rock music is typically a medium tempo uh, sort of genre. So somewhere between 100, 120 beats per minute is where you find rock music. There's of course variations, but um, that's a good place to start. So we're gonna look at this. This is 120. And typically rock music is just a kick and a snare. And then in between those, you have your hi-hats, you have your crashes and everything like that. So the kick on one is add the snare on three and fill it in. Simple, right? It's like rock music. Rock music is very simple. Listen to your favorite songs, you'll see that it's just a very simple one and three, kick and snare. That's what allows the rock song to have groove, allows you to swing it really easily, and it doesn't do too much, but it gives way to the third thing that we'll talk about later, which is sort of the stylistic uh, flares that you can add into it. Um, but before we do that, let's talk about the instrumentation. Now, the, a rock band usually plays with a live kit, right? That's kind of the beauty of rock and roll, is that it's live. So we're not playing with an 808, which is like <laughs> or you're not playing with really brushes that's like a jazz feel. And you're really not doing too much in terms of, uh, you don't have time to do it, right? You're a rock drummer, so you're just kind of crashing on everything you got with thick sticks, you have big toms, and a big, big kick drum, and any kind of snare. Sometimes it's a really tight snare, or sometimes it's, um, it's something that's a little more spacey, like, or even a clap sound like that. That's a little more 808, but... Um, but you get the idea. So, um, so let's focus on that. Uh, kick drum, make it really big and <laughs> organic sounding. I like to add a little bit of a <clears throat> to it so that you get a little bit of tone. <clears throat> and that sort of warms the whole thing up a little bit. Um, with the snare drum, you're doing a PF sound. So, <clears throat> puff, 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 right? But you're not actually vocalizing it. You're just saying PF with as much <clears throat> explosion as you can get. Um, so, Make your lips very tight if you want to make the sound. If you want to kind of loosen it up a little bit and make it a warmer snare. So that way you have. And basically you accompany that with sort of a live sounding hi-hat or ride sound uh, hi-hat being. Just to keep the tempo or a ride is. Don't really use that too much in rock, but if you throw that in every once in a while, then you kind of get the impression as if you're playing a larger cymbal up there, and then you crash every once in a while uh, whenever you need to, which gives way to the third and final topic, uh, the stylistic flares of rock. That's the sort of third beauty of rock and roll, is that it kind of gives everybody liberty to do what they want within the realms of the tempo. So a guitarist gets to play a three-minute solo, the lead gets to go off and do crazy uh, ad-libs and things like that. And the drummer gets to do fills whenever there's usually a break. Um, and since rock and roll is kind of repetitious, you're allowed to do that at the end without screwing things up. So uh, do a tom roll. So or toms are essentially just a toned, uh, a toned kick drum, but up a little higher. So a kick being a tom might be I'm saying quarter, uh, doof. A DF sound, um, so you can do that. Um, so don't play too many. You don't have 20 different toms, but um, just imagining that you're in a pattern, and you get a chance to do a fill at the end. 
maybe double up the snare. So, or you could even double the kick since you're nice and slow. It's like, something like that. And finally, like I said, you have the crash at the end, um, which gives you the ability to kind of accent, um, accent the end of a passage, right? So, it's very typical rock music. It's typical any music, but if you can give it a really big, bright crash at the end of it, it's a very iconic rock sound. Um, so I'm just going to do a pattern real quick. I'll put it on 120, and then have a listen. Comment below. Again, this is Richard Robot. Uh, I'm a beatboxer with The Exchange. I'm on tour right now. And uh, hit me up. I'm going to try to hit out a video every once in a while. Thanks, peace.